Good morning and welcome to Moments with Melinda. I am your host, Melinda Moulton. And today my guest is Roxanne Scully. Hey, girlfriend. Hey. Thanks for being here on my show today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let me tell my viewers a little bit about you. There's a lot about you, but let me just see if I get this right. Community organizer, restaurateur, developer, redeveloper, retailer, meditation instructor, entrepreneur, athlete, resort owner, and change maker. Did I miss anything? Sounds good. Perfect. Didn't want to miss anything. You are an extraordinary woman, and I'm so excited to be able to interview you today and share you with my viewers. So let's get right at it, Roxanne. Tell us a little bit about your childhood, where you grew up, and a little bit about your, your youth and growing up. Great. Uh, well, so I grew up in a small town. Uh, it's a, a town in mid-state New York, Johnstown, New York. It's uh, really, I think the population is like, I don't know, 10,000. Um, so definitely a rural upbringing um, outside of Albany, outside of Saratoga Springs. Um, I grew up very simply with a very uh, nuclear family for people in my family, my brother, my mother, my father extended family in the area as well. Um, and yeah, my childhood was pretty simple, basic, um, loving, and also quite tough now looking back. Um, I had a father who's bipolar, brothers bipolar, lots of mental health, lots of alcoholism in my family. Um, so uh, that has really shaped me as an adult. Well, you and I share in that. My mother hmm. also had an alcohol problem. So we share in that. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah we get together but um so who would you say is your greatest inspiration and tell, tell us a little bit about your teen years and where you went to school and what landed you here and but but who is your greatest inspiration in your life do you suppose oh that's a big question melinda um i don't i don't know if i have a specific person i would name that i would say that i had many 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 teachers and mentors along the way from uh, childhood educators uh, in school system, public school system, to my martial arts uh, dojo instructor. I was in martial, into the martial arts when I was a teen, and I think that shaped me, to other friends and family members, and uh, nature has been a huge teacher. Uh, so I think it's really kind of broad, um, and I don't think I can answer that question specifically with one person. So you're comf comfortably inspired by things that you are engaged in. Yes. That's a gift. That's a gift when people can be inspired by just what's around them and their moment. So you're yes. one of those moment inspirational people. Yes. Um, so what about, what about your teen years and your college years and, um, you know, meeting all that good stuff? <laughs> uh, so yeah, teen years, I think I was, um, like I said, I, I was highly inspired by martial arts and the discipline and the, uh, the body centered, um, awareness that came with all of that. Um, I got dealt deeply into that in my teen years. I, you know, I had great friends that surrounded me. Um, I was what always kind of, kind of martial, excuse me, what kind of martial yeah. arts was it that you were engaged in? Tell us a little bit. I, I did a Shotokan karate, um, a small dojo there in Johnstown, New York. Um, Michael Campos was the, was my instructor. Uh, and I think what I learned and loved there was not only like my own body's wisdom, but my ability to tap into being a woman in a mostly male dominated sport. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, I excelled in sparring and katas, and I would uh, perform and go to competitions, local competitions. And I just remember feeling like I, not special at all, but like that I was kind of special in the field. And that I think really empowered me at a young age. Well, I bet there's a lot of people out there who, who, who thought you were special and you are special. You're very special. Um, um, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, running into this, this gentleman who ended up becoming your, 
your husband and your lover and your business partner? How did, how did that all take place? Yeah, how did that all take place? Plus, Scully, how did I, that uh, yeah, it was really it was really serendipitous. Actually, I I ended up um, doing really well in my public high school. Um, I did not come from um, having a lot of financial background, so I got a scholarship to St. Lawrence. And um, so I ended up going there because it made a lot of financial sense. And also it put me into a, um, a world that was a little different than the one I grew up in. Um, it was very, uh, at that time, St. Lawrence was very much a private school environment, small private school with a lot of people who had a lot of more means than I had. Um, so that was a learning curve in and of itself. Um, and I did a lot of growth there and I really resonated with some people there. And one of the people was this guy, Russ Scully, who was in my friend group. And we were actually very, very good friends all through college. I was always dating someone else and he was always dating someone else. And uh, then we fell in love senior year. It was actually just, we both kind of fell in love. It was really kind of strange, but um, maybe universal. I don't know, influence there. Uh, and then I moved with him out to California after college. Uh, so we graduated St. Lawrence and moved out there. And I feel like that was another big influential period when you asked earlier about a person, I think more place. And so California became kind of a place for me to do a lot of internal growth. Um, and so, yeah, Russ and I moved out there and then he asked me to marry him about five years later wow. and we moved back and that's when we moved back East. So where in California were you? We were in a place called Santa Barbara. Oh, Santa Barbara. Um, yeah. yeah. And a uh, beautiful place to be in your 20s, as you can imagine, wild and free as we were. And um, <laughs> did a lot of restaurant jobs there. And that's, I think, when I really kind of solidified that whole idea of working in the restaurant business and service industry. And uh, although I never worked in the kitchen area, I did have a lot of growth in the front end of the house. And that kind of served me later at the spot restaurant. Were you a surfer? I was a, not a surfer in California. Talk about that. No, 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 no. I, um, I was a water girl from growing up on lakes in the Adirondacks. And I was a big water skier. My dad's a big water skier. So I knew water, but I knew lakes. And so when I moved out to California and became immersed in the ocean, it was pretty scary. Like I was scared of sharks. I was scared of like the waves. I was, you know, my guy friends would go surfing and there were no other women out there that much then. And so I was like, no, this is not for me. And then, uh, so it was years later in my thirties when I, when I fell in love with surfing and now, yes, I am a surfer. And now you are yeah. a surfer girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All yes. right. Well, talk to, talk to, so you, you came back to, you came back to the, the East Coast. Did you come to Burlington or did you go other places before you landed here? Yeah, so that's a little story there. Um, Russ and I wanted to come back um, to be closer to family as we started to think we wanted to be married. He asked me to marry him. So we moved back here and we had three places that were um, intriguing to us when we were considering coming back. Um, we wanted to be near water. So uh, it was Rhode Island. We wanted to maybe be under the ocean. So Rhode Island was in the mix. And then Boston, because we might want, maybe we want to be near a city, you know, I don't know. And then Burlington showed up in the outdoor magazine as a place to raise family and it's up and coming. And he and I had gone when we were friends at St. Lawrence, we came and went to a samples concert. And we're like, oh, Burlington is really active actually kind of cool so do we know anyone there and we had a friend who lived here so we moved here sight unseen really we'd been there once and decided to kind of just give it a shot and to be honest it didn't really settle with me that right off the bat I mean we moved from Santa Barbara which was beautiful and we moved here in October which you can imagine stick season and um yeah so it was not really other than the lake I was like why is this so why am I here um but then the people the people that I started to meet and the relationships that I started to form just yeah I think kept us rooted here and you and you understood the weather because you were you know from exactly. Rotoga Springs and were you a skier I was a skier yeah I did love to ski at that at that time, I would say that was my biggest yeah, winter sport, skiing, cross-country skiing, downhill skiing. Um, so yeah, so just getting outside, connecting with nature, like the beautiful spaces that we have here in Burlington. I mean, that that was something that I definitely think held us here. Great community. So you, so you come on back, you choose, 
you know, over Rhode Island, Boston, you choose Burlington and you move on back here with uh, your husband. And what inspired you to do what you started to do? What, what, what was that, that spark that, yeah. that inspired the two of you to do what you first did, which was, I believe, the spot, right? Yeah, I yeah. think that, you know, so at the time, so what, so year we went to what year was this? Like 97, 97. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so 97. So, you know, I can say all these things now reflecting back, right? So at that point in time, when I moved back, you know, I was in my late 20s and I, you know, I got my degree in government of all things and from St. Lawrence, four years there. And then when we went to St. Lawrence, I went to Santa Barbara, I, I, I don't know. I, I decided I needed to go back to be a teacher. I had some teaching in my, my lineage with my three aunts and they're all teachers anyway. So I, I became a teacher. And so I went, you know, I had four more year schools, school years of becoming a teacher out in California, elementary ed. And so when I moved back, uh, you know, I, it was in that time frame of teaching when it was like, really hard to get a job like there weren't teaching jobs like there it was for some reason it was just really hard um so i became a paraeducator i worked in charlotte central school i uh also worked in huntington and i did a lot of like para para educated stuff even though i had a full-on teaching degree and then i landed my first teaching job at jfk winooski i was a, a fifth grade teacher there for a number of years and that was in the public school system. Anyone who's worked in that knows what that's all about. Um, so it's a pretty broken system. Uh, and I also had a big heart. And I, so anyway, I didn't last too long. I burned out pretty quickly there. Uh, and so when I ended up getting uh, pregnant with my first child, Baxter, I, uh, I, I just left the school system and I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. But anyone who knows me, that doesn't, there's a lot in me that needs to be expressed. And so when Russ and I saw this opportunity to um, transform this gas station, we decided to go with a restaurant. And um, with my background in uh, the restaurant business, and also I think Russ and my ability to call in a humans to help when needed, um, we were fortunate enough to gather enough um, enough people and resources to make the spot restaurant happen. And so that's kind of where my focus went when I was a, a young mom, was being a mom and being a uh, being involved in that first business. So talk about the theme of the spot. And if, if for all of my viewers who I'm talking with Roxanne Scully, um, the owner of the spot, uh, it, it's on Shelburne Road. There's three of them now. Um, there's one down the waterfront. There's one in the in your facility at Hula. And then there's the one which your first one, which was on Shelburne Road. So talk to us a little bit about the the vibe and the food, because it, it tell us a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, I think it was just like um, this really great gift. I think Russ and I have of just like following our passions and like whatever we love to do. We like to bring other people's along, uh, other people along to do it. I think that it was Russ who was like, you know, what if we make it like a surf? We have all these like great surf art and whatever, like make it like a surf style restaurant. And then we had this really great restaurant that we and all the great food from, you know, California, all this fresh local like food idea. We just put together this menu. And um, I know I remember saying like, I just want people to be able to come and get whatever they want. Like, I remember that was like, you know, something that I really, you know, and of course the chefs that I had were not so keen on that, but I really pushed that agenda because I really wanted that. I wanted to be able to go and be like sub the avocado for the spinach. And, you know, so we had your build your own omelet idea, the, the safari, the morning safari and all that kind of stuff. So it's really not, it was like, that's what I think Russ and I brought to it was the spirit of it, less of the like, how, what, why, how, what, are we going to do this? Um, so luckily we had enough wonderful humans that worked with us around this idea and that created this helped our vision become a reality does that make sense it's an incredible restaurant and and it's really the morning to go to it's the meeting place yeah so you're gonna have a morning meeting or a lunch meeting that's where you go and you're right you can get whatever you want in whatever way i mean i i always 
my my favorite person there is Natalia. And every time I'm there, she just, she goes, I know what you want. And off she goes. Yeah. And it's yeah. a great restaurant. So congratulations on that. Then you Thank expanded you. to the waterfront, which is a very similar vibe, but you're right on the water. And let's talk a little bit about the Hula Lakeside incubator space, because that's where there is another spot. Um, talk to us a bit about, because I think you did the spot and then you moved into the Hula uh, incubator space. So talk a little yes. bit about that transition. Yeah. So I think um, that was, you know, after it was, uh, there's a few other things in there that kind of like landed us, I think here. Um, well, I mean, there's so much. It's, uh, we, we did the spots restaurants, but then we also did the window waves surf shop. And all of these spaces just sound like they're like, businesses but they're really communities of people and intention um and again it's not something that we were like really driving or efforting making happen it was just kind of serendipitous and one thing rolled into the next kind of like a giant snowball um so i think after we kind of created this community around the water and then we lived close by and we would ride our bike by the blaja oven factory um and we had this kind of like uh, I guess a place in our life where we had more abundance to be able to do something like this. We actually just wanted the beach area of this whole enterprise. And that turned into the Burlington Surf Club, which is a place where people gather to do water sports. Uh, and also I run camps, I run She Girls, Strong, Healthy, Empowered Girls camps out of there, windsurfing camps and that sort of thing. That then this became the next, Hula became the next kind of iteration of this, whatever's running through us and I. Uh, and that is this now a community space to really um, cultivate the shared wisdom that we have here in Burlington, uh, connection and um, innovation in a bigger way. I don't know, it's, I, hopefully I'm making sense here. Um, and that seemed to be the next thing that needed to be to happen for us. And that's what we've created here at Hula. And I mean, it just keeps surprising me with what's kind of coming out of here. And I know, I know like a very small amount of what's coming out of here. Well, it's, it's an extraordinary space and you have remarkable businesses. And uh, anytime you walk in, there's lots of incredible stuff happening and you give an opportunity for people to come in and just work there for the day and open up their computers and do their work. And everyone I talk to has at some point in time who's doing anything that's really exciting will have had a spot in your hula uh, incubator space. So congratulations on it. I'm just somebody who's into redevelopment. I'm just blown away what you've done down there. Uh, then I want to talk a little bit. Of, I know the, the Wind and Waves, which is WND and WBS Surf Shop, which is off of Pine Street, um, that's that you are a retailer, right? That's, a, that's your shop. Yeah, on the outside, it looks like a retail shop. And on the inside, I guess it does too. But I think there's a bigger uh, intention there. And that's this connecting people to nature, connecting people to healthy lifestyles. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a community of people. I mean, now we've been in business for over 10 years. And in the middle of winter, you can go into a space and feel something, right? I feel like it. this connection and, and uh, you know, opportunity and hope. And I don't know. That's what I hope that Wind & Waves is. Oh, I love um, your clothes, quite frankly. Yeah. And, yeah. You go, and you can go online. Yeah. Is, it, is it windandwaves.com? What's the website? The yeah, that's it. And it's WND ampersand and, WVS. No, WNDN as okay. in Nancy, WVS.com. Dot com. And so it's it's also got great, great products and great, great clothes. And then we're going to move because there's so much about you. We're going to move from Wind and Wave Surf Shop on Pine Street. Check it out, everybody. To your resort in Puerto, in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's remarkable and fabulous, too. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a great story there as well. Um, yeah, with uh, Villa Playa Maria. Um, is a place uh, in Rincon, Puerto Rico that we started, uh, I guess it's about eight years ago now. It's two villas right on the ocean. Um, it's Oceanside. And there's a long story there, but basically it's 
it's another great connection with a wonderful human who basically said, Roxanne, you need to come down here. And I went down and I felt an energy and I was like, this is amazing. We need to do this. And then we were so lucky to be, you know, shown this place and we renovated it. And over the course of the last eight years, we've, you know, run all sorts of things from retreats, corporate retreats to I run uh, mindfulness meditation retreats now three times a year. Um, we do open stays where people come down and just rent rooms and kind of connect with Russ and I, um, we rent it out to people we don't know and they, it's just a business. Um, but it's a really, truly beautiful place. And again, it's place, it's this beautiful place in connection with nature, um, and letting that just do the magic that happens when people of like mind and spirit and wanting to just grow and evolve and with curiosity and wonder connect in a place. Yeah, like like Rincon. You are a wonder provider. Um, can you give us the website for the resort? What is the sure? Website? It's just Villa Playa Maria dot com. Villa Play Playa Maria. Playa Maria dot com. Yeah, dot com. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's and, Port, and Puerto Rico is such a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so let's talk a little bit about a film that you all made recently called The Film for the Dream with Ben Gravy. And it's a hero story about uh, Ben's journey to sobriety, and he surfed in all 50 states. Tell us a little bit about that film. It's an incredible, I feel very, very honored and grateful to have been given this opportunity. It's an incredible film um, for everyone. Um, it is, uh, inc- it was incredibly um, humbling and beautiful to work with a team of people to create something like this. And um, I am a recovering alcoholic, so I was deeply touched by Ben's story. And um, yeah, I just think it's an incredible thing to check out. Um, And I just, like you said, it's a hero's journey. So it's incredibly inspiring. And I guess the message of the story is through hard work, anything is possible. And um, I I feel that's true. Yeah, I feel that's a true statement. Um, Nothing... Nothing comes easy sometimes it does. And when it does, that's great. But um, it does take effort and a perseverance and a knowing um, and a reaching for something greater than what you're what you have in this very moment. Well, you you are, <laughs> you are a perfect example of all of that. Thanks. And I myself, too, have not had a drink in 20 years. Um, so um, here here on that um, in solidarity with you. But it's a great it's an incredible film. So for my viewers. Film for the Dream, the story of Ben Gravy, his journey to sobriety. Uh, Google it and check it out. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your meditation because you hold meditation sessions at Hula. And Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit to my viewers how they could get involved or can they get involved or what what has meditation done for you? Yeah, wow. Okay, that's a lot. Let's see, real succinctly. Um, so I did create, I have some wonderful humans, younger women who have taken me on to kind of get me kind of in a vein of sharing more of what the gifts have been given to me. So I do have a website, roxanscully.com. And there it's very, it's very much just a placeholder right now, but you know, there are retreats that I do. Um, that are always available on that website. And also um, it gives my, um, I have two weekly gathering, meditation gatherings via Zoom. Uh, if I'm home, it's in person, but I do, I do Zoom um, from Puerto Rico. So one is Tuesday at 12 o'clock. That's just a short sit, 15 minute Vipassana style, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, meditation, um, no sharing. And then on Thursday, 5.15, I have um, a 45 minute group. It's a 20 minute sit guided by me and then uh, a little bit of sharing if you want to. Uh, So those are my two gatherings right now that I do that are open to everyone. And then, um, as I said, I do three retreats a year down in Puerto Rico. Those are two are um, closed. One is open right now, meaning they're just sold out. One is open in February. So I have about four more slots open for that one. And again, you can go to my website to see um, when those are. And um, Vipassana is, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm schooled under Tara Brock and Jack Cornfield. Um, they are Vipassana style meditation teachers, mostly body-centered, breath-centered practices. Um, 
and then just in general mindfulness you know i teach a lot of i do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with people um 30 minute sessions for that as well and right now everything is kind of word of mouth um i just yeah, I only have so much energy, <laughs> but yeah. I'm very, this is my focus now. I am, I am, I truly feel like it's probably through a lot of hard work. I've been given a little bit of a gift here to, um, to spread this beautiful practice. And uh, yeah, so, so that's it. So to my viewers, because I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to join you on a Thursday. I'm going to have to change a, a going, an ongoing appointment that I have every Thursday at five o'clock. It's actually my piano lesson, but I'm going to, have to change that because I want to do your 45 minute meditation to my viewers. It is Roxanne with two N's and it's a C, Scully, S-C-U-L-L-Y dot com. And if you're interested in getting involved in meditation, go to Roxanne's website and you can get involved. What a great gift you're giving the community as, as always. I mean, all the work that you do is a gift to other people. And one of the amazing things about, about you, and I think about Russ too, is that in my interview with him, as well as with you, you always give credit to other people. You always, I mean, anything that you've done and accomplished is always the, the result of other people who have been involved. And there's not a lot of humanity who is who, do, who does that. And I so deeply appreciate that in both you and Russ. Is that is that your your gratitude about the people around you who who have been on this journey with you is 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 all about the love, mm. right? Right. Yes. Yes. And you couldn't have said it better. I mean, I couldn't have said it better than what you just said. Um, I feel so honored and grateful for who I have been touched by and continue to be touched by. And I I very much feel like people who come to me with a question or think of me as their mentor. I'm learning from them as well. So I just, I'm, if, if there's any message I would want to get across, it's that there is no siloing. There's no, I've got this figured out. There's no, this is the one person. It's like all collectively together. I am super hopeful for what is to come. Super well, hopeful. It's so interesting because my question as we're marching or tiptoeing to 2023 my, my final question for you uh, in our interview is any words of wisdom for young people? You have, is it, is it three sons that you have? I have two sons. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but and many so other sons too that okay. I call sons, but okay. yes. <laughs> well, there you go. You've got a lot of sons. So the words of wisdom for young people today in the world that they're living in, uh, what, what, you know, Roxanne Scully, what would be your words of wisdom for, for young people today? This is uh, piggybacking on what I just said. You do not need to do this alone. You're not meant to do this alone. We are a collective and we're all connected. And the more we can lean into that awareness and touch into that in whatever way speaks to you, find it. There's the answer. Fantastic. So, so what's next for you? We have a few minutes left. What, what is the next iteration of Roxanne Scully? What's going on? Well, I mean, I'm about to embark on a really amazing project with a dear friend. It's been in the making for about five years. It's something called Babarusa. Um, it's an immersive art experience that we're hoping will be at the heart of Burlington to help heal people. So, and, you and, and gather. You and Teresa and Davis. Yeah. And, all, and all the people that I've, I've been a supporter of that too. Yeah. And share it with her and her husband and, yeah. and you yeah. and, and my efforts to save Memorial Auditorium. And this is such a yeah. perfect, perfect use of this building. And so talk about, you know, the cosmic yeah. together to create this. I have no doubt. I have no doubt in my mind that that yeah. is exactly what is going to happen at Memorial Auditorium. And no one better to take yes. for that extraordinary building. Um, so to you and all that you do and thank you, you bring to our community, I'm so grateful to know you and I want to get to know you better. Yes. Our community thanks you for all that you've done. And to my viewers, uh, what a great half hour with Roxanne Scully. Mm -hmm. and to all of you, I want to wish you a happy new year. And I want you to know that there is hope for a better world ahead. And let's move into this year with that in our hearts. Okay. Thank you, Melinda, so much for having me on your program. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, my friend.